there is one fundamental concept that you need to understand in order to get the most out of your conveyor belt 3D printer. This concept is so important because it directly affects how fast you can get parts out of your printer and actually put them to use. I'm going to explain this concept in detail and show you one simple slicer trick with some examples that I've been using to dramatically decrease the amount of print time you need in order to get a part. Let's get started. You might be using a Creality CR30, a Sane Smart Infit 20, uh, maybe an iFactory printer, or one of the PowerBelt 3D, conveyor belt 3D printers that I've designed and shipped. But regardless of what brand of belt printer you're using, the one concept you need to understand is this. Every layer is sort of your first layer. On a traditional 3D printer where the X, Y, and Z axes are all 90 degrees to one another, you only have one first layer. That's probably pretty obvious. This first layer is critical to the success of the part being made because every other layer builds on top of it. Typically, the first layer of a part is printed slower than the rest of the layers. Usually the part cooling fan is turned off and the build plate has to be carefully leveled. These special considerations are needed to make sure that the plastic sticks nicely to the build plate. But on a tilted axis conveyor belt 3D printer, things change. Your first layer is often just a single line of plastic. Every layer after that still builds on top of the first, but it also needs to stick to the conveyor belt at the same time. Because of that, Belt printers have a tendency to take longer to go from a 3D model to an actual part in your hands, at least without using this slicer trick that I've been using. Let's take a look at my default PTG profile in IdeaMaker for a tiny belt beta printer. The first setting that I want to look at is really the most important. Let's go to the speed tab and look in the top left area. I like to set the outer shell speed really slow like 15 to 20 millimeters per second. Again, this is because the outer shell of whatever we're printing needs to be able to stick to the conveyor belt. So just like a first layer on a traditional 3D printer, we're going to print it slowly. Next in the same tab at the bottom right, I like to increase the quantity of slower layers. On a traditional 3D printer, I'll usually use three to five slow first layers, but when I fire up a belt printer, I'd like to increase that to 10 slow layers. The angled slicing we use causes there to be less surface area of plastic per layer on the conveyor belt compared to a traditional 3D printer. If you take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison, you can see how different the first layer looks. On a traditional 3D printer, there's much more surface area compared to a single tiny line of plastic on a belt printer. Obviously, using a slower than normal outer shell and handful of first layers is going to increase your print time. So I have been using modifier meshes within IdeaMaker to help compensate for this. Let's look at a few examples within IdeaMaker. I'm showing examples using my templates for the Tiny Belt Beta Printer in PETG. First, let's look at this nozzle holder. I recently started selling custom shaped nozzles that I intentionally made for belt printers. So I wanted to have a nice holder to ship with every nozzle pack. Slicing with my default PTG profile says the print will take one hour and 52 minutes. Let's see what happens when I add a modifier mesh to this print job. First, select the model we want to print. On the top toolbar in IdeaMaker, click on modifiers, then box. I guess you could choose other shapes, but I find this one to be the easiest. Don't worry about size, we will scale and position it later. By default, the modifier dialog box will say, change settings of overlap with parent model. And that's the option we want. Click the plus sign and a bunch of different options will show up that we can choose from. We are going to want to adjust speeds. Check the boxes for inner and outer shell, and let's change them to something a bit faster, like 15 and 30 millimeters per second. Here's the side-by-side -side of how much print time we saved. 
However, how much print time you can save will depend entirely on the model that you're printing. For example, on this articulated dragon model, we saved just a little over three hours on the print time. But on this master sword, we only saved about an hour. There are probably a variety of reasons for this, but I imagine it mostly has to do with a how many outer shells you're using in your model, because that's the print speed that we're directly changing, and the complexity of the outer shell of the model. And I made up some graphics to kind of try to explain what I'm thinking here. If we were printing a cube, the cross section of our layer halfway through would look something like this without a modifier mesh. The outer shell, inner shell, and infill all print at slightly different speeds, and the printer needs to accelerate and decelerate whenever it's changing directions. The specifics around 3D printer motion can be complicated with accelerations and decelerations and how the print speed is defined versus how the printer is actually moving based on the geometry of an object. However, let's just keep things simple and we will add a modifier mesh to our cube and use the built-in speed analysis in Idea Maker to look at the toolpaths again. With a modifier mesh in place, the printer will move slowly at the bottom of the part to help it stick to the conveyor belt and fast on the sides and top of the part. This is because we position the modifier mesh at Z equals 0 0.5 in the slicer. So that protects the very bottom of the model from being sped up when we don't want it to be sped up there. So for parts with a small cross section, the printer might not be able to accelerate up to the specified top speed before it's time to start slowing down again so that the bottom of the outer shell can stick to the conveyor belt. For small parts, you won't see as drastic of a change in print times because of the smaller cross section of every layer. But for larger parts, I think this technique can be really helpful. Let's take a look at one more example where this modifier mesh trick can really be put to good use. This is a 500 millimeter long IB, and without a modifier mesh in place, it takes about 18 hours to print. But after putting a modifier mesh in place to increase the print speed, that gets cut down drastically to just a little over 12 and a half hours. That saves you five and a half hours of print time. I have been building and developing conveyor belt 3D printers for over three years now as of recording, and I want to help all of you be successful with them. This modifier mesh trick is something that I've been using and will continue to use as a part of my list of best practices for using this type of 3D printer. If you are having trouble getting prints to stick to your conveyor belt, the root of the problem might be the conveyor belt material. The popular 3D printer companies have taken off the shelf conveyor belts that were never meant to be printed on and kind of made them work, but that usually only works for printing PLA. When I first started building belt printers, I too needed a conveyor belt and spent 28 months testing 32 unique combinations of papers, fabrics, foils, and films to come up with a conveyor belt formula that I think works really well with a lot of different common 3D printing materials. Nowadays, I make them in custom sizes if you want to build your own belt printer, and I offer them made to size for the ever-popular CR30 from Creality. I will put a link in the description where you can learn more. Let me know what you think about this technique to speed up your prints in the comments. And if you have come up with any creative solutions to belt printing problems, I would definitely love to hear them. Happy printing.